gentlemen, welcome to Modern Life is Goodish. My name is Dave Gorman. I have a large screen, a remote control, and a laptop full of things I want to show you. And, well, since the first series, there has been a big change in the lives of Mrs Gorman and me. It's not something I thought I would talk about on stage. Uh, to be honest, I thought it might be a bit too close to home. But the truth is, it dominates life so much that you can't really avoid it. It has changed our whole outlook. You know, all of a sudden, it's not just you. Um, I'll be honest, it wasn't planned. Um, the cat just followed us home, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We, we have a cat now. Um, she doesn't always look like that. Sometimes she looks like that. Sometimes like that. But mostly like that. <laughs> um, and we didn't want a cat. We never talked about wanting a cat. We're not really cat people. But it was one o'clock in the morning and she followed us for a hundred yards and she was tiny and hungry and in need and we are human and so we offered her some kindness. We couldn't bring her indoors, we didn't know if she was house trained, she could shit everywhere and ruin the furniture. It's the same reason we haven't had children. But we got an old cardboard box and a towel and we left that on the doorstep as a kind of makeshift bed and I gave her a tin of tuna and we went to bed and we got up the next day and she was still there as was the tin of tuna. So I gave her a tin opener and <laughs> we didn't know what we were supposed to do. We put up posters, we asked around, and when I asked people for advice, they all said, oh, take her to the vet and see if she's been microchipped. I had no idea that was a thing. People put microchips inside cats. I had no idea that was possible. Nobody microchipped cats when I was a kid. So we took it to the vets, where we discovered that she had no microchip, which means we couldn't find her owner. She hadn't had her jabs, she hadn't been, you know, done. And the vet gets out some forms and asks us to fill, fill them in and says, what's her name? So we're still dead set on trying to find the real owners, so a name wasn't really important, I just had to find something. I looked around, down there, there was a newspaper. I said the first thing that came to mind. I said, her name is HRH Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> And I wish I hadn't now. We have never called her that. That is not her name. Now that we've ended up keeping her, we call her Clancy. But I can't persuade the vet that that is not her name. The vet thinks she's HRH Queen Elizabeth. So I keep getting messages like this. <laughs> this is a reminder that HRH Queen Elizabeth is soon due a flea treatment. <laughs> reminder, HRH Queen Elizabeth has an appointment at 9.30 on the 5th of the 7th. Her vet will be, and obviously I've blanked out the name of the vet there. I haven't censored the sentence, her vet will be most honoured. <laughs> <laughs> and my life, it is expensive. We've had to take her in for a jab, we've had to have a microchip, we've had to, you know, let's be delicate, have her done. Not to mention all the food and the cat hardware we've had to buy. We are five or six hundred quid in a hole with this thing. And frankly, if the original owner came forward now, they can whistle. Because we're the ones who paid to have her womb removed. <laughs> it swings and roundabouts, don't worry. We put a microchip in, we took a womb out. <laughs> we have turned our cat into a wombless cyborg. <laughs> and I'm sorry, that's an unpleasant phrase, isn't it? Wombless cyborg. <laughs> that's the unpleasant bit there, isn't it? Very difficult word to confront. And yet, so close. <laughs> so close. It's the little details, isn't it? Sometimes it's the little details. Yeah. We got a posh cat flap. We got one of these. Uh, as you can see, it works with your cat's existing microchip. Basically, the only thing that can get through this cat flap is our cat or something that has eaten our cat. <laughs> <laughs> and it stores up to 32 pet identities, which is handy if you've got a schizophrenic cat. <laughs> shouldn't be encouraging anyone to let 32 cats through a door, should they? That's 288 lives right there. <laughs> we had to get one of these cat flaps because there are some big boy cats in the neighbourhood that are more than happy to chase her all the way into our kitchen. What can I say? She's a pretty cat. <laughs> her milkshake brings all the toms to our yard, ladies and gentlemen. But it is a pretty amazing thing. That I like that. How, I want one of these for me. No, I'm not the biggest drinker, but there are times when I'm stood on the doorstep fumbling for my keys. That would be bloody brilliant, wouldn't it? I've spoken to a mate of mine who reckons he can take one apart and put the right bits in the front door. It's just the vet who refuses to chip me. <laughs> Apparently, it's not ethical, whatever that means. For 
anyway, we keep odd hours, myself and Mrs Gorman. I work in the evenings. I'm here right now. It's tricky to make sure that she gets fed at the same time every day. So we also uh, bought one of these. This is an electronic bowl that opens a compartment at whatever time you tell it to. And like the cat flap, this is amazing. But at the same time, all this means is that thanks to technology, we have a cat that is able to completely and utterly ignore us. <laughs> we love that cat, we pay for that cat, and we receive no catty benefits from that cat. She is using the technology that we have provided to avoid as much human interaction as she can. And you can't blame her, because we all do it. We all use technology to cut out human interaction. The other day, I did something I've never done before. I ordered a pizza online. I'm 43, that was my first ever time. I moved house not so long ago. Because I've moved house, the place I used to call was no longer the right place to call. So I went online to find a new local place, and as I did that, I suddenly realised I didn't even have to call them. I didn't have to speak to a person. And why would I choose to speak to a person if I don't have to? I ended up at the website of a company called Pizza Go Go. I ordered one large pizza for the two of us, and when I went to pay, I saw this. Please note, we have automatically added cookie squares to your cart for only 99p. Promotional offer, if you would rather not have these delicious oven warm cookies, please remove them from your cart. What the hell? You would never accept a human being doing that to you, would you? This isn't the man at the counter saying, would you like a drink with that? This isn't someone on the phone saying, do you want some garlic bread? This isn't someone trying to upsell you. This is you walking towards the supermarket checkout and a man in a Tesco uniform lobs a baguette in your basket. <laughs> and then when you complain, he just says, well, if you don't want it, take it out. <laughs> That's not on, is it? You can't go around putting stuff in my cart for me. A person would never do that to you, but a machine would. So why do we prefer to deal with machines? And we don't learn. When we wanted to get that cat flap fitted, we didn't shop around, we didn't ask people for recommendations, we just went to the website catflapfitters.com. I figured you can't get better than a cat flap fitter. <laughs> you know, they just seemed like the boys to trust to me. I mean, if they've registered that domain, I figured, well, they must be the best. As if being the first people to register a website is any kind of qualification for fitting a cat flap. So Mrs Gorman got in touch with them, and she got this text message by return. Here we go. Dear Beth, many thanks for contacting catflapfitters.com. Unfortunately, at this time, we are without a fitter, <laughs> so are unable to help. Our apologies, best regards, catflapfitters.com. I love this message. It's so polite. I mean, they're not doing anything wrong. It's just that they're not doing anything right either. More to the point, they're not really doing anything, are they? My favourite part is the we, the plural. The idea that there are several of them manning the phones, replying to all the inquiries, keeping the business going when they're unable to do any bloody business. Why haven't they updated the website to say that they're without a fitter? Why haven't they updated the website to invite people to apply for a job as a fitter? There's only one way of responding to a text message like that. You have to reply as Mrs Gorman did. Dear catflapfitters.com, many thanks for getting back to us. It is indeed unfortunate that you don't have a fitter at this time. HRH Queen Elizabeth is most disappointed. <laughs> What? We've not heard a peep out of them since then. <laughs> I'll see you after the break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dave Gorman, and this is Modern Life is Goodish, where we have, in a roundabout way, been talking about the rise of the machines. And we are, I think, hypocrites when it comes to this. We all claim that we like human interaction, that we want things to be more personal, and yet we all do everything we can to avoid human interaction wherever it is humanly possible. One of the things people always say about London is, oh, nobody talks to anyone on the underground. And it's true, they don't. But you know what? I have travelled through most of this country using public transport and nobody talks to anyone anywhere. It's not like in Leeds you see a man getting on the bus saying, Morning everyone! 
And everyone's like, morning, Peter. That doesn't happen. Stop giving London a stick, because we all bloody do it. That's how we like it. That's how I like it. But we all pretend that we want things to be more personal, because it's polite. Sometimes, a company will make their service more personal, because that's what they think we want. Like coffee shops, they've started doing this thing now. You know, you place your order, and then they say, and what's your name? And they write your name on the cup, and when your coffee is ready, they call out your name. That's more personal, isn't it? But I don't know many people who like it. It makes me very uncomfortable. I don't know why, I just know that I don't like it. There is a coffee shop near our production office. I'm in there three or four times a week. It's not one of the big chains, but they have adopted this practice. I've worked out a way of avoiding it, though. I've tried different things. My first tactic uh, was that I'd order my drink. In my case, it'd be something like, you know, cappuccino, two sugars. And then say, and what's your name? And I'd say, my name, uh, cappuccino, two sugars. <laughs> and they'd say, no, not your, not your order, your name. And I would say, no, my name is cappuccino, two sugars. And if that's not what you want to write on my cup, I'm not going to pay for my coffee. So they would write it, and then when they call out, cappuccino, two sugars, <laughs> you should see the looks from other people you get. How did he work out how to do that? <laughs> Why does he get to be anonymous? I want to be anonymous too. The only problem with that particular tactic is that it's quite a common order, and the chances are there's going to be other people in the coffee shop who've ordered a cappuccino and two sugars, and even though they gave their name, there might be a Sally there and a Trevor, they've given their names, and they've kind of forgotten that in the three or four minutes it's taken, and they hear cappuccino, two sugars, and, and they reach out to get your coffee, and then you're forced into having a small human interaction, which is exactly what you'd been trying to avoid in the first place. <laughs> so my next tactic has been to make up things that sound like drinks, but aren't actual drinks. Uh, like this one, for example, the Mocha Chocker Frappa Chocker Mock Chocachino. Um, and I'll tell you what, other people in the shop, they do look at you like you know something they don't know. <laughs> he has been to the depths of this menu. How does he do it? My favourite of those was this one, Rum and Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven o'clock in the morning, rum and coke. That's for me, thank you very much. Uh, free coffee on the house. They don't like that one. But my favourite of all of these, uh, I was in the queue one time. I was queuing up, there was a few people. The, the guy in front of me got to the front and they said, what's your, your order? And he said, uh, caramel macchiato. And they said, sorry sir, we've stopped doing a caramel macchiato. And he said, what do you mean? But I've always ordered a caramel macchiato. Caramel macchiato is my drink. And he said, well, I'm so sorry, sir. Head office have said there's, there's not much demand for caramel macchiato. We have taken it off the order. We can't do that for you. How dare you? I'm the demand. I've been here every day for three months ordering a caramel macchiato. Why did nobody consult me? I want the caramel macchiato. They said, look, I'm so sorry, sir. We can't do that for you. It's no longer on the menu. So we ordered something else instead. And then I stepped up. And they said, what would you like to drink? And I said, a cappuccino, two sugars, please. And then they said, name. And I said, my name? Oh, Caramel Macchiato. <laughs> and he just looked at me and went, don't do this. <laughs> I am going to keep doing this until you stop asking for our names. <laughs> Which they have now stopped doing, thankfully. But they chase every new innovation simply because it is new. They do loyalty cards, like a lot of coffee shops, uh, and instead of putting the name on one side of the, of the card, what they did for a while, they just had a QR code on the card. You might not know that they are called QR codes, but you will have seen them about. They look like this. Um, that's not a maze, uh, although it could be if you wanted to use it to... <laughs> help pass the time. You can get from top to bottom on that one. Uh, they're basically a bit like a barcode, uh, and if you have the right app on your smartphone, it can scan it, and you immediately get all the information that it contains onto your phone. I guess the easiest way of demonstrating how they work is to show you. So this is a receipt from a train journey that I made recently, and as you can see, on the reverse of that receipt, there is a QR code saying, your chance to win, and it leads to a URL, which is there, nationalrail.co.uk slash competition. But you don't have to bother typing that into your phone if you've got a QR code reader. You can just do this, can't you? Just point your phone at it and look at this. 
takes a second. And there is the URL, nationalrail.co.uk slash competition. And that seems like magic. And they feel kind of new and cutting edge. And so companies, they all want a QR code because they want to be cutting edge. And that would be fine if anyone out there was actually using them. But almost nobody is. This is like mailing people the instructions on a Betamax videotape. <laughs> and I fell for it. This one I showed you before. That's my QR code. That leads to my website. I used to have this as my avatar on Twitter. It was my avatar for more than a year. During that year, one person <laughs> clicked through to my website from my avatar. I'm convinced that these things are a complete waste of everybody's time. Nothing illustrates this better than the yellow pages. As you can see, there's a, a QR code there on the front cover and the message, more QR codes inside, yeah? <laughs> they think we love QR codes. And then you go inside and they feel the need to explain what they are and how they work. What's this? A QR quick response code is a way of loading info quickly onto your mobile. To download our free app, one, if a QR code reader is not pre-installed on your mobile, search for QR code reader on your mobile's internet browser and download one. Two, launch the reader application. Three, scan the code on the front cover. Four, open the link and follow the instructions to download our app. Five, you now have access to the Yell mobile app. Or <laughs> just type apps.yell.com directly into your phone's browser. How utterly pointless is that? At what point in typing that did somebody think, why are we bothering? This is like if you were walking through the supermarket and you were approaching the orange juice aisle and you saw a sign saying, what's this? And OJ, orange juice, <laughs> is a way of taking on vitamin C with your breakfast. <laughs> to enjoy some orange juice, one, if an orange tree is not growing in your garden, <laughs> search your local garden centre for an orange tree and plant one. Two, make sure your orange tree receives plenty of sun and regular water. Three, pick some oranges. Four, squeeze the juice from an orange into a glass. Five, you now have access to some orange juice. Or just buy some bloody orange juice directly from the orange juice aisle. This is ridiculous, isn't it? Recently, I found what I think is the scariest use of a QR code I have ever seen. This genuinely freaked me out. I was at a bus stop on my way home from work uh, a few weeks ago. I saw this QR code. That's stuck on the glass of the bus stop, okay? No text, no context, nothing to tell you what it is. And I was intrigued, and I have a QR code reader on my phone, so I, I scanned it in, and it took my phone to something that sent a shiver down my spine. Now, if I told you what it did, you probably wouldn't believe me. So instead of telling you, I'm going to show you, and I think it will freak you out too. Now, we need one person to sort of try this out. I know you're, you're well brought up people, you're in a theatre, you have your phones turned off, so we need just like one person uh, to, to demonstrate this for us. Um, now, I know you were all emailed uh, before the show, and because we knew you were coming, and we said, can you please, if you can, install the QR code reader on your phone? Just on a show of hands, who here has got a QR code reader on their phone? Okay, um, and you also had an email saying that you should all wear red socks. Who here is hands up if you're wearing red socks? Yeah, that was for no reason. We just wanted to see. <laughs> we we just wanted to see if you do it. So well done, well done, everyone. Um, we were testing this out earlier. Um, that's a better photo of it, and it works better if you're sort of in line with the screen. And I'm not. I'm, I'm just. I'm being drawn to the, the girl with the strappy top. Um, uh, what's, what's your name, young lady? Hannah. Hannah. And you have a phone with a QR code reader on. Obviously, everyone's got the phone turned off. Hannah, just you, if you could please turn your phone on. Obviously, this might take a little while. Let me know when the phone is on, Hannah. Are you with the people who are on, on either side of you? Uh, I'm with this one and the two back there. OK, is that your boyfriend? Yeah. Oh, hello there, sir. Oh, yeah. It's all right, I'm not flirting. <laughs> <laughs> you can have him. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said I could have him. <laughs> Very nice. It's on. Okay, can you get onto the Wi-Fi? Do you know how to, you can look for the settings? The Wi-Fi for here is password, password. Yeah. And the password is Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they asked me, the fools. <laughs> oh, come on, Hannah. Come on. 
You're in. Okay. So open your QR code reader. You kind of need to try and angle it so you're as, as square onto the screen as you can, if you can. And hopefully, if you just sort of leave it looking at it for a moment, it should. Snap to, is it snap to something? Yeah. Okay, now click, click through to where it's taking you. This is genuinely weird, isn't it? <laughs> Hannah, has it opened up anything? Yeah. What is it? My house. It's a picture of your house. <laughs> exactly. How weird is that? <laughs> On a QR code on a bus stop with no text whatsoever, and it knows who you are and where you live. That's freaky, isn't it? What kind of weird big brother shit is this? <laughs> Could you just hold your camera up, phone up and just point it? At, we won't show the details of the house, but we'll be able to see that it is a house and that we're not making it up. How weird is this? Now look, if anyone at home is watching this and they think we might be making this up, you want to check this is real, I'm going to leave this image on the screen as we go into the break. People at home, if you want to, pause your TV. Get a QR code reader on your phone, scan it in yourself at home, and when we come back from the break, I'm going to explain what I think is going on. OK, we'll see you shortly. Welcome back to Modern Life is Goodish, where we have just established, with Hannah's help, that modern life is actually quite scary-ish. Because before the break, I showed you this QR code, and I asked Hannah to scan it on her phone, and it revealed, genuinely, Hannah, a photograph of your own house. And that is legitimately scary. Except that I have a confession to make, because the truth is, I made this up. I made this QR code, I put it on the bus stop, I also took it off the bus stop, no littering has occurred. And the reason that it led to a picture of your house, Hannah, uh, is that because we knew you were coming, uh, and your brother Ben, who's sitting behind you, um, <laughs> has, has set you up. So thank you, Ben. Thank you very much, sir. Um, he told us you were coming, he told us where you live. <laughs> And don't worry, Hannah, nobody at home, if they've scanned that in, will see a picture of your house. Um, because after this recording, but before the show is broadcast, we're going to remove that. We're going to leave that. The, the QR code will still lead somewhere, but it won't lead to that picture. Uh, so if anyone at home has scanned it in, they've been taken to this page, uh, which says, Congratulations <laughs> on purchasing a lawnmower from Modern Lawns International Gardens Limited. Your account has been debited, £365. <laughs> and your lawnmower will be delivered within 14 working days. <laughs> if you believe this message to be in error, please click here. And if they click there, <laughs> they get taken to this message. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm purchasing a second lawnmower. As this is your second lawnmower, it will only cost you £299. <laughs> if you believe this message to be in error, please click here. And if they click there, they'll see this message. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> please note, we have added cookie squares to your cart for only 99p. <laughs> and how lovely is this? Because we are laughing at a joke that hasn't even happened yet. <laughs> We are laughing at a trick that's been played on people in the future. <laughs> but you know that they will do it. <laughs> but we should just stop for a moment and think about what has happened. Because doesn't the fact that you were all prepared to believe that a QR code on a sticker on a bus stop led to a picture of someone's house doesn't that say something about how we relate to technology these days? About how much faith we put in machines? I worry about this. I worry that the more we allow machines to make decisions for us, the more we inhibit our own ability to think for ourselves. Every time you put your iTunes on shuffle, every time you let a theatre website choose the best seats for you, or you, you let Amazon recommend something based on your previous shopping habits, you kill those neurons that should be being used to make decisions for you. I find myself paralysed with fear sometimes, not knowing what I'm supposed to do because I don't know how to think for myself. 
It's even worse when you get a new credit or debit card. I got a, a new debit card recently. I got this letter with it. Obviously, I've redacted all of the important details. Uh, please note, your pin has not changed and is still shit. That shouldn't be there. Um, <laughs> I'm messing, that's not really there. I added that to be silly. Uh, I have obviously covered up all the important details because this is the detail I'm interested in. Destroy any old debit cards you have securely as your new card will be valid for immediate use. We are responsible for destroying the cards securely. But how destroyed does it have to be? How much destruction is secure? Why aren't they being any clearer? You know that cutting it in half isn't good enough. That's not a very complicated jigsaw, is it? <laughs> cut it in four, that's not really much clearer. What I always do is I cut horizontally through the card, right through the line of the numbers, thinking that'll bloody do it. And I look at the two halves and think, well, that's obviously a seven, that's obviously a six, this is no use. So I move the scissors like a millimetre up the card and go again, and then another millimetre. I basically shave my card <laughs> from the middle. But I'm paranoid. I've seen Argo. I've seen people can put this shit back together again. So I look at the small metal chip and I'm thinking, I have no idea how that works or what secrets it can contain. So I cut through that on 27 different angles. <laughs> And I just keep going until the card is basically a pile of dust. I separate it into two separate little piles, and I push them back into one big pile and then separate them again in a new formation. I put the new piles into two separate sandwich bags. One goes in that pocket, one goes in that pocket. I get on the tube, I go into the centre of town, and I drop one of them in the first bin I see on exiting Oxford Circus tube station. Then I head to King's Cross and get on the Eurostar, and I go to Paris, where I drop the <laughs> second bag in a different bin. I can't tell you which one, I'm not bloody stupid. Point is, why haven't they given me proper instructions? And more to the point, why? am I unable to work this out properly for myself? Soon, it's coming, there are going to be cars that make decisions for you. Driverless cars are the future. If you don't believe me, this is the slightly arch voice of ITN News. The future is here. Well, almost, and in the limited area of transportation, Google unveils the driverless car. Yeah, the driverless car. Yeah, it was all over the news recently. This is how Auto Express covered it, pointing out that it could help to reduce car accidents. But it wasn't just the motoring press. The Independent had it, as did the Mail. They're pointing out that it, it will have no steering wheel, accelerator pedal or brake pedal. It just goes at 25 miles per hour. It does everything for you. And oh, this got some people worked up when this was in the news. There are people out there who love cars so much, who define themselves by these things, that this little innocent bubble of technology caused them huge offence. Do you know what? I kind of like those people. I like the people who get upset about things they don't really need to get upset about. They occupy the bottom half of the internet, screaming into the nothingness, ignored by most, but not by me. Because I have a hobby, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I like to read those comments. I like to turn them into something more beautiful. I visited seven or eight different news sites where the Google car was being discussed. I've taken my favourite comments and turned them into something that I like to call a found poem that I would like to perform for you now. Well, well, well. Surprise, surprise, surprise. This is yet another attack on the privacy and rights of free British citizens. When I get in my car, I want to make my own decisions. I want to choose my own route. It is bad enough that a sat-nav knows where I have been <laughs> and probably passes that information directly to the government. <laughs> but having the car make my decisions for me is clearly a step too far. Too far, and in the wrong direction. <laughs> gimmick! It is a gimmick. It will never catch on, and I'll tell you why. Because it is a gimmick. <laughs> they have confused the idea of a search engine and an engine engine. <laughs> Anyone who has seen any of the Herbie films knows that this will not end well. <laughs> Serious question. Do we want Google to wipe our bloody asses too? <laughs> it's only a matter of time. 
Poogle! <laughs> OMG! No more Top Gear. <laughs> what about suicide bombers? <laughs> Has anyone at Google considered that this seems to be a perfect suicide bomber delivery vehicle? <laughs> Without the need for suicide? <laughs> this will be amazing for the aged and disabled. Those who cannot drive themselves around to do the simple tasks the rest of us take for granted. Yes, and also for alcoholics. <laughs> this will be perfect for alcoholics. <laughs> I'm sure we would all be safer if we had corks on our forks <laughs> and helmets on our heads. But living like an automaton is not for me. I am not an automaton. <laughs> I am an autonomous man. <laughs> Why has it got wing mirrors? <laughs> At the moment, the number of cars on the road is limited because not everyone can drive. But if nobody needs to learn how to drive, then there will be no limits. Because everybody cannot drive. <laughs> And so there will be more cars. And that means there will be more accidents. It has no steering wheel. How does one take control of it? If an out of control bus or lorry is heading your way? Are we supposed to Google our way out of a collision? <laughs> because I tried to Google my mum's Facebook the other day and it couldn't find it. <laughs> so I don't fancy our chances in that collision. Maybe it has a horn. <laughs> I think. to Modern Life is Goodish, where we have been discussing the way in which technology rules our lives. And of course, in this technological age of ours, it becomes more and more important for people in certain industries to have their own website, to have their own little bit of online real estate. Which is why I always find it quite satisfying when you hear about one of the world's big hitters getting it wrong. Uh, there's a really famous case that goes back to 2001. I love this. This is wonderful. Judge lambasts Armani in domain name ruling, says the register there. Artist retains control of Armani.com. And that is the nub of the issue right there. Armani, not unreasonably I suppose, wanted to have the website Armani.com but somebody else had registered it before them. And when it went before a judge, he ruled in favour of the artist, which is fair enough when you see that the artist was called Anand Ramnath Mani, or A.R. Mani for short. <laughs> How can you possibly tell A.R. Mani that he's not entitled to have armani.com? The judge couldn't. He is just as entitled as them. Of course, if you prefer your news from a more mainstream source, here it is on the BBC News website, if you can remember when the BBC website used to look like that back in 2001. Disappointingly, I think, at some point in the years since then, the fashion label Armani have taken control of the site. So Armani.com now looks a bit like that. Um, I don't know how it happened. Maybe some money changed hands. Maybe a Canadian artist has been found dead with some very tight jeans on. I don't know. But <laughs> somewhere along the way, it has happened. Maybe it's because British people are less litigious. I don't know. But there are some brilliant examples of British celebrities who you would expect to have a website and who don't. Uh, my favourites are Angela Rippon and Edwina Curry. Just imagine being Angela Rippon or Edwina Curry and stumbling across these. Angela Rippon uh, is a punk band from Japan who like wearing Mexican wrestling masks and have named themselves inexplicably after a British newsreader. Their website is full of really interesting stuff like that. Um, I'll be honest, more of you read Japanese than I thought. Um, I bothered to go to Google Translate for this. What it actually says there is, we are Angela Rippon. One night we rock all day. We are a band from Japan. Keep rocking. 
and you're a ripping. It never stops rocking. Keep rocking, keep rocking, keep rocking, keep rocking. <laughs> How much must Angela Rippon love that this website exists? As you can see, there is no audio on the video for UK users, uh, but I thought it was worth looking at the video anyway. I'm pretty confident when I say, I reckon that's a din. That's a racket right there, isn't it, obviously. And if you try and find out about the band, you will realise very quickly what a terrible name it is for a band. You've named yourself after something that's more famous than you. I managed to find one picture of them online, and I have to say, uh, that fella is my favourite. <laughs> he just doesn't look very keen. I don't think the drummer is really into the whole Mexican wrestling mask thing in the way that the others are. But I love that these people exist. Now, if you go to edwinacurry.com, it's a similar tale. It's different, but similar. This is edwinacurry.com, and if you go there, you will find this chap, whose name is Edwin A. Curry. <laughs> now, you might be wondering, what is the A for? And you wouldn't be alone in that, as his website says. A lot of people ask me what the A stands for. The answer is Alan, now with a U. Please note the spelling of my names. You'd be amazed at the number of times I check into a hotel and discover that I'm Edwin Alan Curry. That is not my name. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Edwin, I'm not that surprised. I mean, those are probably the more common spellings of those names. He is coming across as a bit of a grumpy old sod, if I'm honest. But he redeems himself with this. I cannot make it clear enough that I am not the former MP, Edwina Curry. With that in mind, please do not email me asking about eggs, John Major, Strictly Come Dancing, Come Dine With Me, or anything else Edwina Curry related. I am not she, and she is not me. Because what Edwina Curry most wants at edwinacurry.com is a reminder that she once shagged John Major. <laughs> and despite his tone in all of these, he describes his current mood as jolly. <laughs> Say what you like about Edwina Curry. You might not like her, but credit where credit's due. I think you've got to admire the fact that she at least hasn't called in the lawyers and tried to have this website taken down. And I say that with complete confidence. Because, well, because I know who Edwin A. Curry is. Because he's me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that bloke is. That's just a picture of an old man I found on the internet. I've no idea who that is. <laughs> The truth is that a while ago I wanted to send Edwina an email one day to give her a piece of my mind. I assumed that she had a website, I just typed it in, edwinacurry.com, I discovered she didn't have one, and so I made one that I thought would make her laugh when she found it. That's all it is. And she's never tried to be taken down, and that's why my current mood is indeed jolly. That's why, <laughs> of course. It's just a little hobby, that's all it is, just a little hobby of mine. Uh, in fact, it's worth looking more closely at the video on angelarippon.com. Um, <laughs> If you look at that video, and then you take the colour effect off the video, uh, and then run it on... <laughs> yeah. So it turns out that was me as well. And it really is, it's just a little hobby. I've, I've done it a few times. I don't mean any harm to anyone. This is one of my favourites that I've done. Uh, this is DermotMurnahan.com. Um, <laughs> If you go to DermotMurnahan.com, you arrive at a website that says Victorian Hospital Architecture by Joan Simmons. <laughs> so behind DermotMurnahan.com, there's a website just showing loads of pictures of Victorian hospital architecture. And my thing is just imagining Dermot Murnahan discovering this by accident one day and being freaked out by why anyone who wanted to create a website devoted to Victorian hospital architecture would decide to host it in the name of DermotMurnahan.com when they're not called Dermot Murnahan. Imagine that you are Dermot and you're looking at this site and you can't work out what's going on. You think, maybe I should have a website after all, I know. I'll, I'll email Joan and I'll ask her if she'll let me take control of DermotMurnahan.com. So you click on the contact link and you discover there's an email address there, which is info at VictorianHospitalArchitecture.com. <laughs> and he checks the address bar and he's not imagining it. This is still definitely DermotMurnahan.com. Well, says Dermot to himself, I'll just check VictorianHospitalArchitecture.com and see what's there instead. So he goes there and he discovers that behind VictorianHospitalArchitecture.com is a website called DermotMurnahan.com. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to DermotMurnahan.com, the best place for Dermy fans. 
And beneath that, there's some text which says, it has been brought to my attention that my pictures of Dermot Monaghan are appearing on victorianhospitalarchitecture.com and my photos of Victorian hospital architecture are sometimes appearing on dermotmonaghan.com. I do not know why this is happening. <laughs> If you have come to this website, victorianhospitalarchitecture.com, and it is full of pictures of Dermot Murnahan, then please go to my other website, dermotmurnahan.com, where you should hopefully find the pictures of Victorian hospitals you were looking for. <laughs> and at this point, I'm imagining Dermot getting very scared. He's thinking, what chance have I got of taking control of the website when she doesn't even know how to put the right content there in the first place? What if I ask her and I end up running Victorian Hospital Architecture.com? And why is this woman obsessed with these two things? Why would someone who's obsessed with Victorian hospitals also be obsessed with Dermot Murnahan? And obsessed is the right word, because beneath this text, on victorianhospitalarchitecture.com, there's this picture of, <laughs> of Dermot, because that's what this website hosts. Basically, fan art that I've made of Dermot Murnahan. Um, things like this. News, 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 Murnahan, yeah. Or this. <laughs> or that. <laughs> and all of this is hiding behind victorianhospitalarchitecture.com. Some people, they, they take cyberspotting very seriously. The Royals recently registered a whole load of web domains. Uh, this is an article in The Telegraph about it. Uh, as you can see, it quotes, uh, Buckingham Palace has bought up dozens of website addresses for members of the royal family to protect their online identities, fueling speculation. It will launch websites about them. And then it later it quotes a Buckingham Palace spokesman who says, We have purchased a number of URLs as a precautionary measure to stop others using them, and in case we want to use them in the future. I think the key clause there was the to stop others using them clause. The Express covered it as well. Uh, in fact, they listed all of the websites that they had registered, which was handy, actually, because <laughs> you could use that to cross-reference uh, the ones they hadn't registered, which was very helpful. It certainly helped me to buy hrhqueenelizabeth.com. Um, so thank you very much, Daily Express. Thank you to the Daily Express for your wonderful, wonderful help in that regard. Now, if any of this lot are watching, Angela, if you're there, Edwina, Dermot, if you would like to have your domain, just get in touch. I will relinquish them all quite happily. But Queen, if you're watching, I'm afraid I do not extend that offer to you. <laughs> No, I don't. And I'm not being unreasonable, because the thing is, Edwin A. Curry doesn't exist, but Edwina Curry does. Angela Rippon, the Japanese band, do not exist, but Angela Rippon, the British newsreader, does. And so I can see that they are far more deserving of those domains. But the Queen is not HRH Queen Elizabeth. As you can see from this Wikipedia page about the British royal family, uh, the others are all HRHs, but the Queen is just HM. She is Her Majesty the Queen, not Her Royal Highness the Queen. That is how her title is styled. And so realistically, she has no legitimate claim on hrhqueenelizabeth.com. No legitimate claim whatsoever, so she can not have it. Which is why, if you go to hrhqueenelizabeth.com, you'll see this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> because that... That is legitimately HRH Queen Elizabeth, isn't it? Maybe not to me, maybe not to you, but to at least one vet. <laughs> and maybe to a firm of cat flap fitters. <laughs> and do you know what? Isn't that what the internet needs? One more cat picture? <laughs> I think it is. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you soon when next I aim to prove the modern life is goodish. Good night. <laughs>